Good morning, everyone. This is Sharul from the Web3 Passport. And today we have Giancarlo Sanchez with us. Giancarlo, you are a founder of WebStudio.so. And today we are at Ethereum Dublin's conference. And it's the Ireland's first Web3 hackathon organized by e Dublin team. Giancarlo, how are you feeling about the day two of the conference? Hey, hi, Sharul. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited. Excited. It's the first time that we're organizing something like this here in Ireland. Um, the landscape of technology here is very big, but the introduction to Web3 has been stagnant until now, you know. It's a good opportunity to learn, get people to, um, you know, create and innovate around the space, which is very well needed. That's very nice. And uh, you are also running two workshops today. And uh, they are Web3 no-code stack workshop. And the second is the future of Web3 onboarding account abstraction. So we would like to know more from you and would discover about your workshops in a while. So Giancarlo, you are a founder of webstudio.so and also you are one of the team members at eDublin. So we would like to know from you on Web webstudio.so project and the vision of the project. Yeah, perfect. So I can give you a, a brief overview on sure. you know, my career, the decisions that led me to be here. Sure. Uh, I'm a software engineer from Venezuela. Uh, I moved to Ireland in 2014 due to all the conflicts on the economical and the political situation. Um, and yeah, I was basically uh, motivated to come to Ireland. I started working for a small startup here uh, called Glofox. Moved to Amazon a few years later. In the meantime, I got excited about the Web3 space as I knew it. I started participating in hackathons, saw the potential that it has, especially to uh, fix things that you know me and my life, my family lived uh, back in Venezuela. Uh, that, and yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. exciting. Giancarlo, when I found out that you're one of the team members at ATE Dublin, and I was curious to find out about every team member, uh, so I looked at your LinkedIn, and that's when I found out that you're a founder of WebStudio. So, and I, the, there was a description in your profile that struck with me, and I would like to uh, read it for uh, our viewers. So it says that you are excited to be a part of Web3 space and to, cont to contribute to building a more decentralized and democratized internet where people have more control over their finances and ultimately their lives. Thus, what really hit me was when I read those avoiding tragedies like the hyperinflation in Venezuela that destroyed the life saving of millions of people. Uh, Giancarlo, so you have experienced that uh, coming from Venezuela. Would you like to reflect more on what was the situation? Yeah, sure. So it started around probably around the year 2000. Uh, it kept escalating slowly. It in uh, 2013, 2014 started increasing a lot more. Okay. The effect that it had is that um, the money devalued at a speed in which it was uh, unsustainable. Uh, to give you an example, you will go to the supermarket and you wouldn't see the price tags on the products because from one hour to six hours in advance, price will change. They will be more expensive because. And what happens here, the government put controls so that people could, uh, to, to, could not exchange the local currency for dollars or euros, uh, limiting the ability to mitigate that impact. So what happens is all the savings that people build, uh, especially the middle class, which was kind of prominent during the 90s, uh, basically they evaluated with them and they have no mechanism to get that out or protect it. Right, that is uh, shocking for me to hear because that this is the first time uh, I'm hearing about it from 2000. That was a situation in, and 20, it lasted until 2013 and, um, and there might be a lot of people who might not be aware of what happened in Venezuela. So let's move on to talking about webstudio.so. So what was that um, uh, that part, that particular time in your life or the gap that you identified that this is what I need to do, that's what uh, is a gap that exists I need to fill and I need to do something into web space. So coming from, as so you are a software developer and you are a manager and a founding engineer at Glofox and from there on the idea for webstudio.so was born. So what was that phase in your life? Yeah, so I think it's a mix. Um, uh, I think, well, I had experience on Glowfox building custom mobile apps for the fitness industry here in, in, in Ireland. Yeah. So I saw how everyone envisioned their own uh, application and how they kind of branded their own aspect of you know, their businesses. Uh, joining Amazon, I think, gave me the, the, the whole uh, scope on how to create large products and scale them. Yeah. And 
in the meantime, participating on Web3, I saw this huge potential of creating applications, creating value that could be owned by the users, like mitigating the things like I talk about the the, the you know the currency uh, situation back in Venezuela. Like you control your own currency, you control your own assets. It's kind of proprietary right. Uh, it's one of the most foundational um, elements in the in the freedom. You know, like they the, have the ability to own things. Uh, and yeah, this is something that uh, I started researching. Um, the the aspect that is talked to me and the reason we started with Web Studio was that uh, we saw blockchain as an opportunity to create all this uh, value. The problem is that it was born, in my view, it was born as a solution looking for problems to solve. It was a breakthrough, a technological breakthrough with Bitcoin, the creation of Ethereum, wow. uh, and the creation of smart contracts. Now we're trying to look how we can solve issues. And we've found niches in DeFi, we found niches in entertainment, in, in games, uh, and we're just scratching the surface now. Um, the only problem is that the amount of developers that are working on the space is very reduced. Right. Compare, yeah. it's around 30 to 40,000 developers around working actively on Web3, okay. uh, where you have 30 million developers worldwide. So it's very tiny, Portions it's there. a very tiny handful of people yeah. that have a huge lot of responsibilities behind it. And one of the things that did well, platforms, the uh, local platforms like Wix or Webflow, um, Squarespace, uh, WordPress, was the ability to have citizen developers, what they call, uh, or people that don't have a technical background, oh, right. be able to create these software-based sure. solutions. Sure. So this is what we say, look, what, can we lower the entry barrier then uh, if people can build their own decentralized applications uh, without having to worry about what's the underlying technology, how blockchains work. Uh, we know about the benefits of decentralization. They want to implement it to their own needs, their own businesses, without having to have the hassle on you know, protocols, consensus. Like, so we want to extract that, open that door for citizen developers to create things, and then hopefully see a, a new wave of use cases being solved by the technology. And, uh, and where are you at currently? What iteration of your project you are in at this stage to solving that problem? Well, yeah, we iterated several times. Uh, our first approach, I left Amazon last year in May. Actually, today is one year. Today, yes, today. so <laughs> I also wanted to say to our viewers that uh, we congratulate you <laughs> on the official inauguration of webstudios.so on the occasion of E-Dublin conference. So that's yeah, a you. great day. Thank you, thank yes, you. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, we started as a prototype. We launched a prototype okay. for creating NFT marketplace templates without code. Uh, it failed. We found out that they're talking to customers, doing research. We found out that people envision Web, Web3 is very tribal. Each community has its own sense of uh, um, identity, let's say. So whenever you go in and say, look, I'm going to be a marketplace, it will look completely different from one to another. Sure. That's it, definitely. And this is a problem that we have today. As if you usually see technology, the centralized exchanges, if you see NFT marketplace, they kind of all look alike. Because we go back to the problem of, well, you have a small set of developers yes. that are trying to build stuff around. Like, we need to reuse things. Yes, <laughs> totally. So innovation yeah. is, mm -hmm. on, the, on the experience side, is bottleneck by that. Yeah. So um, we kind of talked to users. We identified that problem and said, look, well, let's do something. Let's uh, use the learnings that these no-code technologies used 10 years ago, uh, have been building over the years, uh, which is let's implement a drag and drop editor uh, with primitives. So primitives as blocks that you drag and configure, no code. So you can define your own layout. All you need to do is just click, configure the properties that are set, and it, sh it works out of the box. Uh, and that's what we are launching today. We actually launched a few weeks ago, but in beta, we're still in beta. Uh, but case, we made it official today in ProCon, for example. Right, that's great. And I also wanted to mention uh, that I did go through your article and I found it, found it very exciting. And the article that everyone uh, should read about it is called Exploring the Convergence of Web3 and No Code, a Game-Changing Partnership. And yes, it is. And the article is written by Giancarlo and it really awakened me in so many different aspects when I went through the article. And mainly starting from 1990 when Excel was um, was released and then moving on to 2003 uh, with WordPress, how yeah. much easy WordPress and Wix has made our lives. And then from 2011, no code plugins were born. And 2020 is the time of zero code solutions and they are rising yeah. so fast and how easy they are making people's life. And we do need these solutions, exactly. which Web3Studio.so is providing to make people uh, make it easier for people who 
a want to save uh, code because not everybody is to, um, it's, it saves time. And, uh, and also people who are not technically equipped for to, to, to assist them, to um, give them that support and facilitate them to build their own dApps. So it's a, it's a very exciting uh, project. And Giancarlo, today in Ethereum Dublin Web3 Hackathon on, on the second day, you're also running two workshops. And the first is Web3 No Code Stack. And the second is um, the future of Web3 onboarding account abstraction. Would you like to throw some light on these two workshops? And what would you like the, uh, the attendees and the hackers to take away uh, from these workshops? Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be um, hosting those two workshops. Those are uh, each half an hour uh, practical sessions that will go with you first through the creation of Web3 applications using no-code technologies, including Web Studio, including Bonfire, including Third Web. So there are so many tools today, that there's so many, so much innovation happening on the no-code space on Web3. It's just a little bit uh, kind of um, fragmented. So I think one of the important things is, is that we can keep uh, the education uh, up. I think that what I expect from that workshop is people will be aware that even if they're not developers and can create things of value uh, using Web3 and decentralized technologies, they're available. Uh, I'm going to show them the path of you know, yeah. how to find them and how to use them. Yeah. Yes. And mainly, just a question is on the tools. So you've mentioned there are several tools existing. And also, when it comes to Web3 startup projects, there are so many, we call in French, beaucoup. <laughs> So many projects. So how do people find these tools? Mainly, not about the project, but tools. Where was the best way to find all these interesting tools that can facilitate us? Um, like Bonfire. I just found out about Bonfire today. Yeah, yes. and the, the, the mm -hmm. good thing about that is, yes. well, mm -hmm. there's new startups coming up every day. Like, yeah. you know, you may search tomorrow and there's a new no cost tool that just launched tomorrow and there's no way that you'll find out until they become famous. Uh, unless you start taking proactive act actions. Uh, what I would suggest here is start joining communities. You know, I think that the, uh, one of the beauties of Web3 is that it's a community-driven ecosystem. Yes. Uh, you can say, well, decentralized, the trustless, but actually there's a lot of trust between people and people support each other. Uh, that you can see that, for example, on, on Twitter, like with the Twitter spaces of the Web3 building community is huge. Uh, you see all ideas. And we, uh, yeah. That has been the inspiration for, for building also Web3. We hear what people are trying to build. In those spaces, we talk to them, we figure out what are their problems, their, their blocks, and we try to solve them. So talking to community, uh, joining Twitter, uh, there's a lot of Discord channels, there's a lot of tutorials on how to uh, do stuff, I think. Yeah. And, and the best one, I would say, is hackathons. All right. Yeah. Yes. That's how I started, for example. Yeah. Interesting. And, and well, how about the second workshop, the future of Web3 onboarding, <coughs> account yeah. abstraction? So that's, mm -hmm. that was, I, I was super excited when I saw it happening. I saw, um, yeah. it was a Twitter, a tweet from Jared Watts from Third Web uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, just doing an example on how to create an NFT minting site. Uh, and the person doesn't need to remember the seed phrase for the wallet. They don't need to sign anything and they don't need to pay for gas. So that was huge because those are kind of the three main problems on the user adoption for, uh, for the Web3 space. Right. And I started kind of just uh, following up that workshop and create a kind of a, um, uh, what do you call it, a spin-off version of that adapted to, this, uh, to the eDublin community. And hopefully my, my objective there is to just make sh uh, open the eyes of people, especially newcomers, that there is a possibility to create user experiences that go beyond to what we have today. And this is a technology, this is a, the ERC-4337 came in in March, yes. so it's relatively new. And right. there's a lot of people that are already building on it, and we can see that value just, uh, again, when, whenever you find me, you're going to see me big on UX, lower entry barriers, right. trying to get adoption. Easier. And this is huge for, for me. You know? Yes, absolutely. And I really liked uh, mention of the UI in UX for WebStudio.so project. And, and that's, I think that's what we need to achieve. Yes, yes the better UX and UI for faster adoption. Yes. Right. And as a part of Ethereum Dublin team, what are your hopes and aspirations for eDublin? Dublin? Yeah, so I think yeah. kickstart the community here. Um, like you have so many big companies here. You have Amazon, you have Google, you have Facebook, you have HubSpot. Like, there's so many talented people here. Uh, yet, you know, the Web3 community is starting to grow. Yeah. Um, we want to leverage that. We want to introduce people and all these experts. You know, this is the technologies that are coming. Can you, help us build, can you help us build on top? Can you help us start adding value to people? Can we start seeing new ways in which we can implement this breakthrough 
to things that solve real value. You know, and I, I think that's a kind of a bridge. Like I mentioned before, it's about the UX, it's about the education, and it's also about bringing in developers. Right. To contribute to space. Developers, one of the big challenges. And what uh, WebStudio.so, what are the key challenges do you think currently exist and what are you trying to do to solve that gap? Is it a, is it a valid question to ask? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's full of challenges. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's full of because at, we're at the moment, we're discovering. Yeah. At the mm -hmm. moment, it's my wife and I. Uh, okay. So she's handling all the community aspect, the customer success. She talks to uh, and, and help us, our users. Uh, sorry. That's very nice. And yeah. I'm in charge of the tech. And you know, kind of the idea guy. Right. And I, so it's kind of family and it's company. So one plus one is always eleven, <laughs> yes. not two. It's always yeah, eleven. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But <laughs> I think I think on the challenges yeah. side yeah. is uh, we've been trying, we've we've been iterating, and okay. we do small iterations, get feedback, try to action on that feedback, and then present the next iteration and get feedback and keep going that. Okay. So our objective is to minimize the amount of iterations that we do and shorten the, the feedback cycle, okay. uh, for, for the loop feedback cycle. The challenge there is that uh, everyone <laughs> wants different things. Um, the users? When yes, we talk about yes, the users? Yes. Okay. Uh, and at the moment today, um, well, the Web3 no-code building ecosystem is still in its, in its infancy. So I think you can say that we're kind of pioneering in that space. So there's a lot of experimental activities that there we need are. to do. Yeah. Uh, because, for example, to give you a Bubble, Bubble.io is a no-code platform for creating applications. It's very flexible. You can create Web3 connected apps with plugins. But they're not Web3 native, they're not decentralized by nature. Uh, where we're trying to build a whole new paradigm in which uh, we say, well, you're going to be able to create decentralized applications that leverage blockchain technology. And you know, even if Web Studio goes out of business, your application will still be live because of the decentralization aspect of this. Okay. You know, which is also a beauty. Like, we're, not here, uh, we're not here to control, we're not here to we're, we're not unleash uh, you know, all, these, all these aspects. And yeah, at the moment, the, the challenge is that one, finding the right balance between uh, decentralization and creating new features that come in. As you know, decentral if you want to build a centralized feature from the ground up, it's a lot more complex, it's a lot more, it's a lot more difficult. There's a lot of experimentation that needs to happen. So we try to piggyback on experiences that happen on Web2 with these companies uh, and try to step by step move it to Web3 and see how it goes. So I think that's uh, the, the, the challenge. Um, interesting. And may I also uh, reflect a bit on feedback here? So how are you currently gathering the feedback? How do you identify um, those users or maybe testers to uh, get that feedback from the real world? Well, so we, know, we, we know when, um, when someone signs in, so we kind of go and uh, introduce them to the platform. Uh, if you go to the website, you see a Calendly. For me, right. like you can book a call with me anytime. Yeah, I yeah. say, look, if you're stuck on something or you want a new feature, call me and right. we're going to talk. And, okay. and that's just something that, that has been working. Right. Uh, kind of a, and the go-to-market strategy in the sense that mm -hmm. even, even, if, even if it's a no-code platform, people need some kind of, need a level of hand-holding during okay. this process because sure. it's, a new, it's a new way of technologies. Definitely. Mixing no-code and Web3, they're kind of, you know, it's a new experiment. So yeah. we need to be there to kind of, get them over the line, and as we do get them over the line and we get project launch, we kind of get that feedback. Giancarlo, uh, thank you for being with us here today, and it has been such an insightful conversation with Giancarlo, and I'm sure uh, everyone who is listening to the conversation would have learned a lot, and especially for me, I'm learning a lot uh, from the podcast that I'm having, and I have a long journey to take when it comes to learning and becoming a subject matter expert in Web3 and blockchain space. Thank you for uh, sharing all the insights and your wisdom with us. Um, and we wish you all the best for your two workshops. And I'll uh, say the names again, the future of Web3 onboarding, account abstraction, and Web3 no-code stack workshop, workshops today on the day two of uh, Eat Dublin conference. And we wish you all the best for uh, webstudio.so and all the future endeavors that you and your projects will take. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us. And it's, uh, it's just it's a great feeling to, and an honor to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl, for, for having me. And it's, it's been an honor.